Good morning, Vesta. How are you? Hope that today finds you finds you good. Hi, Sandy and Lori, Gail. Thank you guys for being here and welcome to another week of mystery quilt cards. Um, I'm real excited about uh, addressing the Facebook Live when there's a quilt card involved as a mystery because um, it's fun. I don't know why I wasn't doing it all along. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, this has been a lot of fun just uh, calling it a mystery. And then, uh, then you see what it turns out to be in the end. Hi, Lynn. Um, looking at the computer here. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Karen. Um. <clears throat> Karen, you're from Iowa. Wow, I was, uh, we've been so excited to watch the Women's March Madness and see the effect that Caitlin um, has had on uh, uh, the sport of basketball and women's basketball. So we've been following that whole story and wish her well. It looks like she will be going to Indiana, which is the state I grew up in. It's not my home state. I was born in Ohio, but uh, lived in Indiana through my high school years. And so I'm excited for the state of Indiana that uh, she could be going there. Um, you know, barring that there's not any like trades going on. <laughs> so before we we get started, I want to talk about or ask you how many of you experienced the um, the eclipse uh, here where we live. We were in totality. Um, if I if we ventured out of Toledo a little bit and we actually got a little bit longer of totality. Uh, but had we stayed home, we we would have seen it also. Um, it's hard to describe that feeling when you looked up and it went so dark that you could see that white ring around it. And it's just a shame that it didn't last longer um, and that we can't just like go back and relive it. Um, it, it was just amazing. So I, I hope that you got to see it. If you were in the path or maybe you traveled, how many traveled to go see it in totality? Uh, that's interesting to know also. Um, uh, it just, just an amazing day. And we spent it with friends. We got invited over to a friend's home in, who lives in the country. In fact, uh, she sports or, um, Maybe sports isn't the word, but um, at her location, she has one of the barn quilts uh, for the um, Ottawa County Barn Quilt Trail uh, on her barn. So um, it was so nice. Some of you who came to retreat last year, you will remember visiting her her place because we actually stopped. She gave us a tour of her gardens and everything. So that's where we got to see uh, totality happen. And uh, we had a toast of sparkling uh, juice, and we she got a big cookie that we all shared uh, for the eclipse. So it was really, really a lot of fun. I just wish it wouldn't be another 20 years before another one happens. But I did tell my husband, I said, I know we'll be in, I'll be in my 80s. He'll be pushing 90. I said, I know, you know. We're going to be up there when the next one happens. I said, but I really think if we're able, we're going to go travel and see it again. Um, so this this could be our once in a lifetime shot that we had on Monday. But I'm really hoping for another one because it was just an awesome experience. So today's mystery quilt card. Let me give you a little bit of ba a background. Several weeks ago, Karen Halterman she sent me a message. Uh, she had come across this quilt uh, card. Actually, it's from Barb Zeger. Um, I believe Karen came across it maybe on Pinterest first. Barb's uh, video on YouTube is from 2012. I will, when I turn the camera down, 
I will bring in the piece of paper I have written here with what her YouTube channel is. And you can um, go back and see it. She did a beautiful job of demonstrating how to do this card. And I'm going to follow a lot of her pointers. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you in the end because I have some examples. We're going to do it very simply. We're going to step it up a little bit. And then I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me. I, and I don't have any water up here. <laughs> and then I'm going to show you what I added to it to give it a very retro um, vibe. Okay, so kind of putting my own little touch on it. Um, but Karen sent this to me, and I, I watched it, and I was planning on when I wanted to do it as a Facebook Live. You are going to love this block. So let's just get to it. While I am flipping the camera around, please greet each other. Say good morning to one another. It's just going to take me a few minutes, uh, not even a few minutes, just to rearrange some things that are on my craft table. Okay, hold on. Um, okay, that's backwards. So we got two. Flip it. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. And I am still working with the uh, Latte Love um, Suite. I did order the dies because when I wanted to step up this card, had I had the dies, I had a really good idea. But I didn't, so I ordered them this week. <laughs> um, and all of this product, the Latte Love Suite is part of the online exclusives. So you won't find the product in a catalog. Uh, you'll have to go to my online store or go to Stampin' Up's. Um, if you go to Stampin' Up and shop, uh, you'll find it in the online exclusives. Good morning, Linda and Marilyn. Oh, Linda, Linda, boy, you guys fell right in line in the comments. Good morning. Hi, Carol from Wisconsin. Stephanie, hello. Hi, Holly. Kathy. <laughs> Janice. Janice says, when it was dark, the frogs and crickets started singing. That is so awesome. Um, Joyce and Tony and Linda, Skeeter, Susan. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Thank you all for being here. I'm really regretting not bringing some water up with me, but I think it's going to work itself out here. Hi, Mary Ellen and Peggy, Jasmine. Okay, let's get going. So, um, I'm going to be using the sentiment, hello there, let's catch up. I'm going to be using the one and three quarter inch circle punch. Now, if you don't have a circle punch, maybe you have a die. And I'll go over and when we get started, um, I'll explain. Um, you could do this with a one and a half inch punch, one and a quarter. Um, but I'm using the one and three quarter and I'll explain why when we get started. Because once you know that information, you can make adjustments. And I want to explain to you how to adjust this pattern if you want to downsize it. Okay, so here, if you want to take a screenshot of this, <clears throat> her name is Bob Zeger, Barb Zeger. Um, again, this was a Pinterest pin that uh, Karen had set with me. Um, if you go to her YouTube channel, this is all one word, crafting for fun 24-7. And it's all one word. This is the old mill wheel pattern. Um, I noticed that in her YouTube videos, I, I found some back even into 2016, but I didn't find anything current. I did send her an email letting her know that I was going to demonstrate 
the card this morning and giving her credit for um, the the design and, and the fact that I'm casing her card. I wanted to give her the credit. Um, I haven't heard back from her. So I don't know where Barb might be um, as of today, but um, it would be really fun if she was watching and could see that uh, a block that she had done in 2012 has revived itself. <clears throat> so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that Barb is watching. <laughs> so that was her information. What we are going to do first, let's talk about the foundation paper that I'm actually going to put these uh, squares on. We are using a four inch square piece of foundation paper. This can be copy paper. It can be grid paper. Um, what you want to do, no matter what size you decide to do this block, you're going to draw a line horizontally and vertically um, in half of whatever size it is. So this is a four inch square. So I drew a line two inches, that's half of four. I did that vertically and horizontally. If you wanted to make this a three inch block, then you would do uh, half of three is one and a half. So that's what your squares would be. And then you would adjust your layer underneath, etc. You know how to build from that point on. When it comes to deciding how big your circle should be, you want it smaller than whatever your square size is. That This is a two inch square, um, just one unit of this four patch. So that's why um, I'm using the one and three quarter inch circle. This is the pattern, uh, the size of the pattern that Barb had done. And um, so I'm just casing what she did. But if you don't have what I'm using, you can make a few adjustments and make it work. Now, I can even go down to a one and a half inch circle. And as we're building the, the quilt block, I will point out to you what difference that circle would make because you're going to see it in the pattern. Um, so we'll do all of that as we're, we're going along, okay? Um, Kathy, it's called the Old Mill, uh, what is this? The Old Mill Wheel Pattern is what Barb called it, okay? It looks so, it's such a beautiful pattern. It looks so time-consuming, but really it's not, and it's going to be a wow pattern to add to your collection of quilt blocks that you use in your card making. Okay, so Joyce is joining us from Ontario. Welcome. So good to have you here. Hi, Ornetta. Okay, so let's bring in some other pieces that I had you cut. So we're going to do this in just two colors. Um, I'm using basic white. I've got an alternative card to show you where I didn't use white so you can see the the difference but I think it's good to do this block the very first time in just two colors white and then whatever your pattern paper is this designer series paper is from the um, lot to love and I've got two one and three quarter inch circles and two two inch squares which that two inch square fits inside my foundation piece okay i've got two one and three quarter inch circles of basic white and i've got two two inch squares of basic white and what we're going to do with these squares is we're going to create a four patch Okay, do not glue down your pieces. 
at this point. I'm just showing you what it's going to look like. Um, what the pattern's going to look like. It's a four patch, but do not glue these pieces down yet. Okay. <clears throat> so let's bring in the trimmer and we're going to do some cutting. In Barb's video, she uses an expired gift card. It could be an expired, you know, any kind of like a credit card or for just show you as an example, here's my library card. This is what she used to line up where she needed to be to cut her circles in half. I couldn't do it without sliding the card. I am not, um, I couldn't multitask it in that way. And I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to uh, put this the way that I'm going to do it so that you can see it. I'm going to have to work at the top when I'm used to working at the bottom. So just bear with me, <laughs> okay? Uh, whatever the size of your circle, you need to know what is that? if it's cut in half. So one and three quarters is seven eighths of an inch. So what I did was I just took, I'm gonna create some bumpers. I'm gonna create some bumpers that I am going to use some painter's tape with. And I'm gonna just tack down my, uh, my bumpers so that I can just place that circle in between them and I don't have to like be making sure that I'm holding one thing down with one hand and trying to cut with the other. I just, she made it look so easy. I, I had, I couldn't do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find, uh, the Stampin' Up! trimmer has a ruler on either side of the cutting track, which is really nice because I can find seven eighths on this side. And now I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna put uh, my circle right up to that. And I need to move it over just a smush to find seven eighths on this side. So once I've got my, my circle centered in there, then I'm going to just use some painter's tape to hold these down. So let's see, seven, where was my seven eighths? Right there. And did that land on seven eighths over here? Seven eighths. Oh, and seven eighths. Okay, so I'm gonna secure that one. And my suggestion is, if you enjoy putting this block together as much as I believe you are, then um, do a whole bunch of circles. <laughs> cut them, you know, cut a whole bunch of them. Leave your little bumpers on here. And I'm going to put one more on this one just to make sure that it doesn't move. And you could you could make these, you could add another piece of cardstock on top of this one to uh, make your walls of your um, bumpers a little higher if you wanted to. But that should be good. Okay. Now this is going to get me really close to cutting my circles in half. I'm actually going to do both of my white at the same time. So I'm gonna put my circle in between those bumpers. It's right up to both the edges. And I'm gonna cut it in half. And then I'm gonna turn half of my circles I'm going to put them up against what I love about the Stampin' Up! trimmer too is we have these little bumpers up here that will help hold things straight. I've got it in between my cardstock bumpers. 
So we're going to do this to the other. And I am going to um, just keep my pieces together here. And then I'm going to repeat this step with the two circles from the designer series paper. So I just got them, got everything, all my circles butted up and hitting bumpers in three different areas. And one more. Make sure there fits in there evenly. And now we can put the trimmer away. Again, if leave your um, your little guides on here because I have a feeling you're going to love this pattern and you're going to want to make more and you're already set up if you're using one and three quarters circles if you were using a one and a half inch circle then you would want you to put your cardstock bumpers at three quarters of an inch on either side of the cutting line because that's half of one and a half okay um let's now bring in It doesn't matter what you start with, but if you're using a white square, you're going to be using your quarter circles of the designer series paper, okay, so that you have two contrasting colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these little wedges and we are going to glue them in the four corners, okay? Um, I need my silicone mats. What did I do with it? Where is it? I can feel it. And I want to get my, I'm going to get my uh, grid out of the way also. So we're going to put our wedges up in the corner. You don't want your wedges going beyond the outside of the square because we need to we need to bump up all of these four squares together. If your wedge is extended beyond the boundary of your square, then when we go to put this one next to it, it's not going to be flush. Okay, so you want your wedge to the outside edge, but you don't want it going past the um, that outside um, edge of your square. So this part doesn't take too long. Now, I'll wait. To, I'll wait till we get this one done, and then I. I'll show you, explain to you what um, using a smaller circle, what how that affects your pattern, okay? I'll sh I'm going to show you where you're going to see the difference. And it's not any, it's not a big deal, but I just want to show you what happens if you use a circle that's even smaller than what uh, I'm using here. Let's say like if I was using, I had punched one and a half inch circles instead of one and three quarter. I'm gonna run my finger right along the outside edge of my square and that will help move as long, I'm using liquid glue. So that will kind of help push the designer series paper where it needs to be so it's not hanging off. Okay, so you notice these little areas right here. If I was to use a one and a half inch circle, what I would notice is, is this area right here would just be a little wider. 
So if I make my circle smaller, this area here gets a little bit bigger. If I made my circle a little bit bigger, then this area here narrows. So that's where you would see the difference there, okay? So let's just um, finish doing our squares. I love this, I love the piecing part of making quilt uh, cards. Um, it's very relaxing to me. It, it makes me, it forces me to slow down and just take my time, enjoy the process. I guess this is my idea of a puzzle. <laughs> um, I like putting puzzles together. I don't have a good area to put a table and that can just be left alone. Um, I do have two kitties. One is uh, for being almost 18, all of a sudden, I was going to warn you that don't be surprised if Cupcake makes an appearance on my craft table because... She did that to me right before I went live. She just decided that she was going to hop up here and walk across the computer, walk across my space. So a puzzle table is out of the question for me right now. Now, I did have some liquid glue get onto my white with that last wedge. I'm going to let it dry a little bit, and then I'm going to come in with a, um adhesive eraser, which I have to reach to get. And I will use this eraser, and I will get off the, the glue that's right there. But I'm going to let it get tacky a little bit first. And so again, I just like to rub my fingers along the edge and help push that wedge in so that it's not extended beyond the outside. And now we're going to bring in the uh, two inch squares of the designer series paper and we're going to put our white wedges on. Your mind is probably already seeing what's happening or the possibility of it. And I think you're, you're just, your mind's just going to be blown on this. Um, Barb made a five inch square card with her pattern. I see why. Um, because even though the four inch works um, on our A2 cards, I can see why she decided to make a um, a bigger card than our A2 because she was she had then a lot more room that if she wanted to add more layers behind it, uh, she could. She could definitely step the card up since she had more. Um, a bigger surface to work on but this this block steals the show you really don't need a lot of embellishments you, just take my word for it when you see this pattern come together you're gonna you'll understand why I'm, I'm like it stands alone <laughs> it really does stand alone Here's something I want to show you. So when you're putting, when we end up putting these uh, squares together, now it may not always be perfect. It may be off just a little bit. But did, do you see how our circle looks like it's one, just one fluid curve there? And then the same here. Sometimes you just need to spin your block around if you're looking for perfection. But you really shouldn't be that off if you were careful in your cutting. You know, there's always that little bit of wiggle room um, when we're cutting, you know, that you can be just um, a hair off. 
but it's it's not going to be a big deal as long as it's not a real big discrepancy. But putting uh, these together is just, oh, it's just the coolest card. Karen, thank you so much for sharing it with me. And um, it took a few weeks to get it into the rotation, <laughs> uh, but we did it. And um, gosh, it would just really make me happy if Barb um, got my email and and saw that... Uh, that we're doing it. I am working on a PDF for this. It won't be ready until the weekend. I've got all my uh, photos taken. It's just a matter of creating the PDF. So there will be one to uh, load into the files over in the community group. But this is also pretty easy that, you know, if you don't want to wait until the PDF is loaded. You can go back to Tuesday's post. It, you know, I gave you um, how to cut, you know, what size to cut the squares, what size circles I was using. So you can go back, prepare all that, watch the replay of today's live. And this is pretty easy to put together. But I know you're going to want to file to put in a, a binder or whatever, how you store your patterns in your card making, you know, the ones that you know that you want to go back and revisit at another time. Okay, so here we've got our two white and we've got our two Calypso Coral. We're going to bring in the foundation square. And Remember, play first before you start gluing down. Make sure that pieces are playing nicely with each other, okay? So um, if I was to put this one here, and what you want to pay attention to, we can always trim off what lies outside of our square. What we want to pay close attention to, that this line is straight, and this line is straight. That's where our focus needs to be to make all of these blocks line up. Okay. So I'm going to go here. And then you're just alternating backgrounds. Remember, I am making sure that I am lined up straight. And then if I put this one here, whoops, and I put this one here. Now I can see that when I glue this down, I'm going to, I'm a little long in the tooth, so to speak, right here. So I may have to do some trimming some very light trimming. It may not even be enough trimming that I have to worry about it, but this is the pattern that we're achieving. Okay. Um, it could be that maybe when I cut my four inch square out of the copy paper, I was a little big. Um, you know how that is placing your cardstock on lines to cut. You might be just even a hair's width different than you cut the last piece. And that's, that's what happens. But, um, this is the block that we're creating. And you'll see how when these two spaces are the same, this circle just looks continuous. Okay? So it may you may have to move some around. Like I'm noticing here, maybe if I moved, this one looks a little bit more narrow up there. Oh, and when I did that, I um, evened up my bottom down here. So um, don't be afraid to play with them. Now that one's just a little off. Let's see if I have one that's a little different. Now my square's fitting a lot better right there. And that one seems to do well right there. Oh, wow. Just by turning my squares, I got it to fit my um, 
foundation piece of paper underneath. That's why it's really important. Just, I know you're excited, but don't start gluing down until you see that all the pieces work together. Now that I know that, I'm just going to slide my pieces out of the way in the orientation that I want them. I don't want to turn them or anything. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put... some glue down within that square. I'm going to square up my corner down here. Okay, and then I'm going to move that one out of the way. I found it really hard to even want to do any quilting on this pattern because it it's just so pretty that I didn't know if I wanted to put any texture on it, any embossing. So um, the ex examples that I show you today, I did not run them through an embossing folder. I didn't know how it was going to change the pattern and I was afraid to change it. So um, if that's what you do, that's wonderful because I will live through your example and then I will get the nerve to try it. But um, a couple of examples that I want to show you that I also tried with this um, block is I used the stylish shapes with the stitched, you know, they have the stitching around the dies, and I can't wait to show you how those turned out. Before I go any further, I do want to get this glue off of here. I'm afraid if I keep touching it, then I'm just going to transfer that tackiness somewhere else. Again, um, if, if you have to do any trimming, if it's really close, you may want to use um, a guillotine trimmer. Like if you just want to sh shave off, oh my goodness, just a hair of paper your paper trimmer is probably not going to do a good job of that. You want a really sharp blade that you can just chop down. So if you have a guillotine trimmer, I recommend that you do it that way. Otherwise, you just might mess up the whole block and have to start over. So I'm just pushing things together. And there is the old mill wheel pattern. I just think, you know, depending on what paper you use, um, what the, the paper that uh, Barb used, it reminded me of like um, a damask uh, f uh, fabric. It was just stunning. Um, so you might want to play with different papers. I think a paper that speaks of one color really helps pop off of the white to give you a lot of contrast, but it's a matter of playing. Um, sometimes we can overthink things. I know I do, and I overthink it, and then I don't try, and had I tried, I could have been really surprised on how it turned out. Now, um, like I said, I haven't been brave enough. Uh, I'm going to flip the card over. I don't really see any uh, basic white or the DSP outside of my foundation. So I'm going to leave it alone. It's not perfect, but I'm going to leave it alone. If I'm not going to do any um, embossing to give it a quilted texture, and I don't want to feel my ridges, which I really don't mind how those ridges feel, let me show you uh, what I do just to get everything to lay down. I take my two cutting plates. 
this is just a scrap piece of paper. Now, obviously, I wouldn't want that on top when I fold this over, okay? Um, but what I do is I place my block between two pieces of paper, and then I run it through. And what that will do, it won't give me any texture, but it will melt these seams right down to the base and it feels like just one fluid uh, piece of paper. Okay, so if you want to lay down those ridges, but you, you're not sure if you want to add texture, just put your block between like two pieces of copy paper or something like that. Run it through the rollers to get that pressure and it will lay down your block. And I've got an example of that that I will show you when we start going through the cards. So what do you think of this block? Um, I think it's stunning. Um, uh, Karen says, what amazes me on your quilt cards is the center design. Um, this, oh, I am so glad that, Karen, you came across this pattern and the fact that Barb did it so many years ago. Because this is going to be a quilt pattern that's going to be a staple in my library. Um, I can't wait to see it with other colors, other patterns. And I know I can downsize this. I don't know what it would look, oh, look what it looks like on point. Now, to put it on point, you have a whole you have a whole nother block here, but to make it fit a card that like an A2, we would want to make this even smaller. So knowing that I just have to cut my pattern in half and know that my circle needs to be smaller than this whatever my squares are, you can make this even smaller. And you could put this card on point. Um, this card would probably, if you were making a five by seven. Of course, you can always make bigger cards. You don't have to do a two size. But I love that this has yet another look when we put it on point. So let's, let's, fit. you know what? Since I've got everything here, I'm going to run this through so that I can show you how flat it looks. It's only going to take me a second. Let me show you what it looks like when we get it out. Of course, I had a little bit of glue that wanted to appear. <laughs> so here, I wish you could feel it because this feels so nice and smooth. Yes, I can feel a slight ridge, but I don't have the ridge that I did before. So it just lays down all those seams and makes it look very fluid. Okay, all right. So now let's um, bring in our card base. I'm going to show you what we're going to do is the simplest version of this card. Um I, I know I said it before, but this block does all the work. I think it's real easy to lose the interest in the block if you over embellish. You certainly want to do a little embellishing um, to step it up. But um, number one, it's, it's so big that it's going to take most of our card base anyway so it doesn't let you do too much to it but it really doesn't need it so there was my uh, that was an eight and a half by five and a half uh, card base of basic white thick and then I scored it at four and a quarter which is half and just burnished the score line here um, I've got a four this is four inches so I went up four and one eighth no, I didn't. I cut the I got I grabbed the wrong square. Now what did I do with the rest of my Okay, hold on. <laughs> I I I think I'm going to have to cut. I think 
I'm going to have to cut one. So I need some early espresso. Because that's what I used. So I want four and one eighth. You know what? I'm going to turn it this way. Four and one eighth. I just want a little peekaboo border. If I go up to four and a quarter, it's going to take the whole front of the card on three sides. Okay. Now let's bring it in. There we go. That makes me happy. Now you can see that I have that, just that little tiny border all the way around. It just helps set, it sets the pattern. So that little border just sets the pattern, keeps your eye from wandering, sets it down. Wow. On this piece of black cardstock underneath, it's hard to see that early espresso. That doesn't really help much more either, does it? So I'm just going to pick it up, have something white behind it so that I can see. And if I need to smush it over just a little bit, if I can, I think this has already attached itself. Where I want to push, I'm not touching the white because if I have anything on my fingers, it's going to smudge. So I'm trying to push where it's designer series paper. And this already locked itself to that layer. So I'm kind of stuck with it. And then I would, you can either place it at the top. You know what? I think I'm going to do at the bottom because I, the example I have to show you, I did my stamping on the bottom, but I think I want to see what it looks like this way. Wow. This is a whole new look. Okay. So the stamp set was the, um, I showed you was the lot latte love and the sentiment was hello there let's, what does it say? Let's catch up. And I'm going to move this. Oh boy, hold on. Somehow I got some adhesive right here. I don't think it's going to hurt the stamping, but I don't want to find out. Okay. Just huff on that. I think I'm going to put it right. Okay, you guys have got a stamp down here. There's no way I can go up that high. Okay, so hello there. Let's catch up. And then I'm going to put my block at the bottom instead of the other way that I was going to do it. I like it up there. You know what? Let, I got to close this ink pad because that's an accident waiting to happen. And then, I mean, this is the simplest of design in the card. If you're a beginner card maker and you don't have all the things, you don't have to have all the things. Some of my favorite cards are ones that are stamps, ink, and paper, or have very little embellishing on them. Sometimes less is more. I'm just cleaning up some <laughs> where I can feel I transferred some of the adhesive. So that is the simplest of a card. Um, there's room here. You know, here's where I thought, oh my goodness, in the dies, there's the two little coffee cups. You could put two little coffee cups up here. Um, there still is room right here if you want to add a little something. Let me show you the cards that I did and how I stepped them up. Because I did 
in the cutting instructions have you do a one inch by like three and three quarters. The reason why I included this is if you wanted to step up the card. Okay, so here's here's the same one I just moved where the quilt block was. And so on my very first one here, I thought about stepping it up. So to step it up, I add a little bit of bling. And what I did was I created my own little flag. Can you see it? The stitched one is going to be for the next one I show you when it comes to like using some dies. But if you don't have dies, you can still make your own little banners and flags. And the way to do that is you take your rectangle, you take your snips, and you just... Now, if you want a really deep flag, really deep points, you just cut in deeper. If you want shallow, then you you back it off. But you can just do that. And then you come in from this angle to where you cut that piece. And you can flag your own pieces of cardstock. If you don't have a die or a punch, that will do it for you. So it's not as perfect, but you can do it. You don't have to have all the things. Okay. So that's how I added a little bit more to the basic card. Okay. So there's that one. And I repeated this card, but I just used the stitched, um, is this a banner or a flag? I always call them both things, and I don't know if I am technically wrong. <laughs> but here I used the, and this is all uh, the stylish shape, stylish shapes dies. So I use this here, but look what I did here. I used the circle from the stylish shapes, and can you see the stitching on my circles here? So that stepped it up a little bit more, gave it a little bit more texture. Kept the bling, just brought in the stylish, stylish shape dies. And then, okay, so here's how I ended up putting my own, um, putting my own touch to the design and here's how it kind of went a little retro on me and I love it and I'll explain here so here I took the smallest of the stylish um, shape circles and I die cut them out and I just put them in the center did half circles here so now I feel like I've got a more retro looking block they weren't supposed to be black I thought I was grabbing early espresso, but I love the pop that the black circles give this card. And another thing I did was I took the stylish shape square and I used it. So in between the little intersections here, you see the stitching so that it just looks continuous all the way around. Now the the square is slightly smaller than if I had cut it at two inches. So I had to adjust what my foundation um, paper underneath was going to be because the size was different. That was the only adjustment that I really had to make was just making the foundation piece a little bit smaller. And I popped up my sentiment with dimensionals underneath. Okay, and I didn't add any bling because I felt like my circles here were my pop. So that's how I changed it up just a little bit to just add, you know, I had to add something to what Barb had done um, to bring, you know, another um, perspective to it, okay? And now I want to show you if... 
by not using white and using a darker color, where I brought in the white was with my circles here. And I want to show you how different the contrast looks. So there is um, a different contrast pattern to this. Um, I still recommend that you first try it with just white and a color. Um, but then if you want to branch out, you can uh, change up your background and keep working with it. So that is today's mystery quilt card, the Old Mill Wheel, again, um, inspired by Barb Zeger and uh, forwarded to me by Karen Halterman, which um, I'm, I'm just so glad that we could do this, um, this block. So, um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you give it a try. When your card is finished, please take a picture of it, share it over in the community group, which is called quilt cards and more at the top of the chirpy page. You'll see some headers. One will say more. And if you click on that, you can look, um, there'll be, um, another, it's called groups. And if you click on groups, you'll see two groups. You'll see the community group, which is called Quilt Cards and More. The other group is for my team. So don't click on that one. You're looking for Quilt Cards and More. Answer three simple questions to join. And then please share with us how you saw this pattern and um, share with us the things that you changed to make it you, to give it your personality. Um, we would love to see them. So that's, that's for today. That is our mystery. So let's, again, let's just look at the basic. Quilt block and some simple stamping here. We just here stepped it up with some sequins. And then let me see if I can put these like this and I don't lose them being out of camera here. Here uh, brought in the stylish shaped dies to do my flag or banner, whatever you call it. Um, and I've got some stitching going around just in my circles. And then this one here has the stitched circles and squares and the extra um, circle for the center. And the neat thing about putting something in the center, if, you're, if your seams didn't um, line up perfectly, <laughs> you can hide it. <laughs> so um, that, that's a plus also. And um, this card here I wanted to note, I didn't... Um, run this through the the plates to set it down you can feel i wish you could feel this you can feel every layer and it feels so cool now on this one i did run it through and i um blended my seams together you can still feel a slight ridge or lip but it's very um subtle it is not the texture at all if you just left it as is. But if you, you know, the feel is just really, really sweet on this one. So with that, I am going to let you go so that you can create your own old mill wheel quilt block and card. And um, I look forward to seeing what you created. Um, I do have some extra cards, so I'm going to give away three cards. If you want to just put in the comments, old mill wheel. I know that's not simple, but <laughs> old mill wheel, then, um, I'll give away three cards. I'll give, I'll give away the basic, a little stepped up and then the finish stepped up. So, okay, everybody have a blessed day. Um, it's raining here. It's supposed to rain all day, so I'm going to just keep creating. 
trying different papers to see how this block changes, uh, how it changes with color and pattern. And uh, I'll be checking in on the uh, community group a little later to see if anybody's posted yet. That's the exciting part of my day. It's like, who's going to be the first one to post? So everybody have a blessed day and I'll be seeing you soon.